Hello everyone, it's Ginger here. Welcome back to another pastel painting. Doing a bit more of a kind of abstracty landscape, I think, today, just because I fancy doing something different. So, first thing I'm going to do is map out what we're doing. Now, as you can see, this is a slightly different paper to normal, and for those that are fairly au okay with what I do, you'll know that this is Velour, one of my most absolute hated uh, papers. I absolutely hate working with it. Obviously, I recently worked with it doing the illustrative owl painting, which is absolutely beautiful. So you can work with it, but it's hard work. You have to have some, you know, pretty fairly specialist tools to work with it. And then on top of that, you're never really going to get a clean, sharp, defined line just because of the way this paper works. So yeah, if you're fine with that kind of slightly soft, romantic look, then this paper does wonders. Now. I am going to try and use a minimum amount of um, mark making colours. I just want to keep this simple. So, thinking what we do, well we're going to usual skyline, so we're going to have a skyline. I'm just making this up, but I'm just, I just want to play with this paper a bit more and do a bit more work with this just to kind of think about what I want to do. So what I want is a skyline, so my usual, I don't want tons of skyline, so I want some mountains, so I'm going to do that, you can probably barely see that. Right, so let's say that that's my horizon line, right, now, I do want this nice, Nice mountain. Oh, that's not mountain shaped in any way whatsoever. That will do there. And then say further mountain in the distance is going to be more blue, I think. So we're going like that. Now, plenty of locks, so let's do. Let's do it on a diagonal. Let's make this a nice straight line, so let's go that way. Now, I want flowers. I want tree lines, so I want trees. I don't want the eye to come this way, but I don't want to. So, let's just do this. Let's bring some tree line in here, and also. Kind of direct, not quite zigzag, but definitely direct in this direction. Now, I still want to keep my lines going diagonally. Or do I? No, I do, because I've got everything else going in that direction, so let's keep it going that way. Right. Yep, if you can see that, you can see that. If you can't, can't. Right. First things first, lightest colours first. We're going for the skies, we're not going to go our fully light colour, but we will go for our first colour. Now I am taking inspiration from someone else's painting, so whilst I am could be accused of copying this person's work, um, I'm just using this to play. This is not a sellable piece. I absolutely hate this paper, so I doubt I'm even going to get achieve what I want to achieve with this. But I want to play with it. I want to test this. I want to see what I can do with it. So let's see what we can do with this. So let's. You can see how light it is on the masking tape versus once it goes down, but never mind. Now, the law can take a lot of layers, but if you want the colour to properly come through, you do have to really add a lot. So, and you can also end up with looking like this way, like streaky. You can't really blend it even if you think it's. It's just not possible. So I want more, I want the blue at the top, so I'm gonna go back over, just as it pop up underneath this paper that's driving me crazy. Um, never mind. Right, it's got some 
sky blue. I like some more white in. Now this water, we want to add, bear in mind that sky should reflect this. We've got this. These are beautiful blue. Um, over here, I want to take this right up to this edge. Lighter here, darker here, which is what we always do. So I'm just gonna make some random marks. Because also this is coming down, you can see the pencil has flattened the flocking on the paper. So you end up with these lines, but you can put them faster down and disappear eventually. Right. Looking suitably weird at the moment. Now we're going to put our lighter blue down for our sky. tells me, right? Velour doesn't have a direction. Velour doesn't have a direction. I'm like, I swear Velour has a direction. I swear to God that if you go in a certain direction, the pastel grips better than other directions. But you know, a lot of people say that's not the case. I don't know anymore. What I can tell you is I don't like this paper. So you see we're kind of building up where we want. There it is. Okay, white again. This is our blue white. This is a this is got violet in it. Now this is a blue earth pencil, so therefore it is super super soft. And it will adhere to this paper a lot better than some of my other ones. Certainly, the, like the Rembrandt's, no chance. Um, but uh, even Unison struggle with it slightly. But these are so super soft, the paper just grabs it. Directions I want things to go. Okay, so we've got sky. Now let's work on some mountainage. So, what a nice blue. I'm probably going to add some grey in as well. into this. I'll oh, probably want to reuse that, we need to come back to it. Um, 
need is more of a, a blue grey like this one. Just a looking a little more interesting. I'm going to get some this darker colour down here. Bear in mind, this is still not our darkest dark yet. Still got more to go yet. Keep layering and layering and layering. See how we go. Right. Going back towards one of my favourite blues. I'm going to start being more of a. This is going to be. Yeah, that might be too yellow. Yeah, how blue is that? Alright, let's get some more interesting colours in, shall we? I want to get some greens in and I want to get some really dark blues in. So, first is find my dark blues. Decent dark blues. Slightly weird, but that's fine. 
Yeah, I see what I mean about it being soft and fuzzy. It's very difficult to get anything decent. Right, we are putting some yellows in. Yeah, I'm putting really nice yellows like this one that I want to put in. Mark's going the opposite direction to what we were doing earlier. It's kind of what we're after. It's got little bits showing here and there. Lover line. Right. Also want to make sure that I'm right down here. distant mountain edge, we've got water, we've got a sky, I'm slowly, slowly bringing some of this in. Right. Now I want to peel the yellow from here. Something like this. It's a little bit more neutral. That. So you can kind of see where we're going now. Nothing too complicated, but just having fun. Okay. I'll try and use the sharp line edge there. Okay, do you want a little bit of orange in this? I haven't really got a proper orange in here yet, but I do think I need it. I also want to get some of this one in here, I think. Oh yeah, that's better. I like that. Right. Where 
believe that that's a little too dark in there, but never mind. Um, orange, right, you want an orange. A nice orange. Is this too bright, is the question? Let's go up and see, shall we? Oh, oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh well, I'd say we have an orange. There's that one. That's, um... It's coping with the Rembrandt. Yes. Like that. Right, let's see where that goes from there. Um, do you want some darker ones? This one, which is a blue dark green. my trusty old chunky boy which is my light 14 from unison it's got a big chunky cast on it but actually that should work in my favour because I
question. Safe to say that that is definitely bright and colourful, if nothing else. It doesn't really have much in the way of depth. I think it's just because I really don't like this paper. But the more I tap it, the more I can, and the more it just comes off, more and more and more. Um, yeah, I feel like I need something to brighten up this. sense but never mind we'll leave it with that anyway right let's get the gun heat gun out and we'll get the tape off and see what it actually looks like it's meh that's all I can really say I'm not 100% thrilled with it but at the same time you know, it's not horrendous it's just Okay, yeah, still don't like it. Still, it is one of the interesting things about velour is that it is good for mark making, but it's still nowhere near as crisp as what you'd get from, for example, pastel matte. And I know if I'd done this on pastel matte, the outcome of this would look um, a lot cleaner and a lot crisper. Like I said, if you like the more romantic feel, um, it's great for that kind of soft edge romantic feel. Um, I know a lot of people use velour for port pet portraits as well. Um, you, use, you can use pastel pencils on it, but I tend to find it flattens the, um, I'm not going to call it tooth, as it's not tooth, it's fluff, um, but it, it kind of flattens the flocking on the paper and therefore it you end up with scratch lines which are not easy to go over. So um, it has its place and it can be really useful depending on what you want to do with it. And one of the things I've always said and stress, cannot stress enough is you have to pick the right paper for you. If you're happier with a really gritty sanded paper where you can see you get a lot of texture, that's great. If you want really bold mark making where your marks are really easily definable, then definitely something like pastel matte. Again, if you're doing pet portraiture and you want to do really detailed fur, pastel matte is really good for that. Sanded papers are not so good for that because the heavier texture of the sand underneath means that you get um, gaps between your pencil lines and that kind of puts a lot of people off. Um, I like sanded, I like working with sanded paper because it has enough tooth to coat with multiple layers when you're doing landscape work. You can get enough of a defined edge to get what you're looking but as well as allow you to do blended edges where it softens so you can do a mixture of both blended and hard, ed hard edges. So pick the right paper for what you want to do um, and then look at the brands and the expensiveness of the paper to then work out what paper works best for you. So I like my sanded papers. Um, if I want to spend a lot of money on a sanded paper then I'd probably go for more of the Canson um, or Fishers or UART. And if I wanted to go on the cheaper end I'd probably go for Colour Fix which you've seen me using a lot recently um, and or making my own. Um, which are great, you know, there's the good cheap options. So if you want to practice and you want to play um, looking for cheaper options. This for law, um, I've got the Vic stuff, which is what I've got. This one I got cheap off Amazon, so it's not the best quality, but it was a lot cheaper than the Vic one. Um, and therefore, you know, if you want to try and play with velour, then I would go down that route first before looking at the more premium paper. And you'll notice a difference. You'll notice a difference in um, how the paper grabs your pastel how the pastel lays on the paper, how the colour stays on the paper as well, whether it's light fast paper, whether it actually is archival enough that it holds your pigment but doesn't actually deform the colour in the pigment, um, whether you can do wet bases on, velour for example, please don't go near it with water, um, the Snellier sanded paper, sanded card, uh, it doesn't take water either, as soon as you add water to that paper, the, the glue that binds the sand on disintegrates and all the sand comes off. So definitely don't recommend it. Anyway, that's all for now. I hope you guys had a bit of a laugh with me doing this one. Um, it's not perfect, but it is pretty and I love the bold choice of colours anyway. So, ta-ta for now and I will see you all soon.